Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in this week's video, I'm really excited to share five easy DIY projects with you. I'm gonna talk you through the process as well as the techniques. So let's head over to project one. I have this old beautiful picture frame. It's actually just a foam mold and the one half broke. So I glued it with some E6000 and now I thought I would change it up a little bit and I'm gonna use some of the Annie Sloan chalk paint. I'm gonna use duck egg as well as some old white and a little bit of Paris gray. I'd like to create multiple layers and this way I can keep a really beautiful authentic vintage look for this picture frame. I'm gonna start with a old white chalk paint wash and this will go into all of that detail and all of that molding. So what I want it to do is the lightest color that I'm using will be sitting in the lowest points of the frame. I always find doing a chalk paint wash to work in small sections. It just seems to manage a little bit easier and this way I don't have to worry about it drying on me too quickly and I'm able to get the effect that I would like. So I'm just using a shop towel. It's lint free so that way I don't leave any residual lint fibers from anything that I use. So this is the area that it cracked and as I say I used an E6000 to fix that and I'm really hoping with the matte chalk paint it will mask it a little bit more. Once I go around and complete the entire frame with the white chalk paint I will let it sit for probably about 20 minutes, half an hour, just to make sure it's completely dry before I get into my next step. It's good just to check and make sure there isn't any puddles if you have a lot of low points in your picture frame. Once it was completely dry, I decided to add a little bit of the Paris Gray, and I think I'm just gonna do it almost like a dry brushing, but it's not 100%. It's got just a little bit of paint. I really wanna create a textured layer on top of what I've already created. Now because I'm not actually doing a dry brush, I'm just kind of stabbing or a stippling motion. I'm going to go around with my moist cloth and I'm just going to pat it out a little bit. The reason I want to use the moist cloth is this way I can actually wipe back and I want to leave a little bit of the undertone of the natural colors that were originally on the frame. So just by using that, I can bring back a little bit of that gold tip and kind of giving it more detail to the textures that I'm creating. This is creating low lights and highlights. This will also bring back some of the shine that's originally on this frame. If you have a picture frame that doesn't even have quite the same detail orientation, I actually recommend to start with maybe a really dark gray or a black paint and add a metallic paint and then proceed on to do these steps. This should give you the very similar effect of what I'm trying to achieve for this picture frame. I do recommend to use a chalk-like paint only because you'll get the matte finish and this way when we go to our next steps, you'll see why you're gonna want that chalk-like finish. Now I'm adding the duck egg blue in the chalk paint because this is the color I want to finalize with, but I'm gonna use the same steps as I did with the Paris Gray. I'm just gonna stipple it on, but I'm gonna get a little bit thicker with the stippling, so I'm almost gonna overlap it a little bit, and I'm still gonna be using a moist cloth just so that way I can pat it out a little bit and still bring back that undertone for those dark low lights. Again, I really recommend just doing this in small sections. I take a very tiny, tiny amount of paint on that chippy brush and I just pat it out and just go around in random. Then I use that moist shop towel and I'll still keep going back just to bring back a few of the high points of the gold tips that are originally on this frame. Now because we really want to control the paint and the paint hues that are going on here, it's just really advantageous to go and use small sections at a time and be patient with it. It definitely will come together and it will look really, really authentic. 
chalk paint is a water-based paint. It does dry very, very quickly. But again, for each layer and each step that you're doing, I just strongly recommend to wait for it to dry. So give it about 15, 20 minutes before you go on to your next step. The really nice point about doing the stippling technique with your paint is you can control how much of that color you want. Do you want a little bit of it or would you like a lot of it? And again, it would depend on the picture frame that you're working on. I'm going to wipe back again a little bit around the frame just to bring back its original gold tone, but I am going to use the gilding wax in bright gold just to help shine that up a little bit. Gilding wax is super easy to use. Just grab a little tiny, tiny bit because it goes a long way. And I'll actually just use the back of my hand, rub it on there first, use the tips of my fingers, and this way I can control how much is going on because I want to just lightly touch the high points of all the detail across the picture frame itself. For the actual frame, I thought maybe I could try something I haven't done before and I have this beautiful fabric. So what I thought is I'm going to actually treat it like a canvas and I'm actually going to kind of stretch it out a little bit and cut it within its parameters of that frame and I'm going to use a staple gun and I'm actually going to stretch it out as flat as possible with my staples and see what kind of effect I can get. The orientation in which your fabric pattern you'll have to figure out based on both sides where exactly you want to cut your fabric but to place the fabric what I strongly recommend is to actually kind of jump side to side as you're running your staples down the frame this way you can stretch it evenly but to create a nice professional look it's a little bit more tedious and a little bit longer to do it this way but that way you don't have any wrinkles and you don't have any kind of bubbles or mispulled areas on your fabric as you're stretching it across your picture frame. I've been collecting a lot of different fabrics and fabric textures as we are kind of redoing our house but you can actually find some great fabrics and even old curtains down at your local thrift shops. So I recommend if you see something that you like and you'd like to use it for an upcycle such as a project like this, go ahead. It's inexpensive and it's a great way to make home decor and to suit your style. I use the 10 millimeter regular staples, but there are ones that are a little bit longer depending how much or how thick your fabric is. This is a fantastic, inexpensive way to add textures and different styles to your home decor. So I actually found this piece at a garage sale and it's in okay condition. The top is in pretty rough condition. This is actually a print so this is not original but it is kind of cool on the inside. It's quite clean but the textures around this little chest is quite interesting. It's almost got like this pattern like it's not something I can sand. So I'm going to have to figure out something I can do with this to perhaps maybe brighten it up, kind of work with its wood imperfections as well as this additional texture. So I think I'm going to go for a lot of chalk paint and other textured ideas to help complement it and I'd really like to just brighten it up. I didn't really have a plan so I thought you know what I'm going to grab a couple of my favorite color tones. I'm going to use this up Obis and blue. I'm going to use some Chateau Grey and I'm just going to play around with it and see what other color hues I can create with this and maybe just do a little mishmash of all of these colors and see what I can come up with. It's sometimes fun just to grab an old plate and this way with water-based paints it washes off really well but it allows you to have a palette and it allows your imagination to kind of grow with some of the colors that you like. So I'm going to start with the uh, Obvious and blue and then I'm going to kind of work in a little bit of the Chateau Grey 
and I'm just gonna go around and random and see what I like and see how it kind of pulls together and then work from there what my next step will be. The chalk paints love to come together and blend so beautifully together. You can mix them if you want to create one specific tone, but I like to create different hues if I can, so I sometimes will just use two different colors and then just kind of create a little bit of a smoky effect by adding the two colors or even three colors just in random. So I'm just going to kind of cross hatch them over each other and just kind of keep working them in together. If you're not comfortable with blending of color tones, another little trick that I'll do sometimes, just because I wanted to have a little bit more of a smoother feathered look, rather than just using a small uh, paintbrush, is I'll take a dry a brush, I'm just using an old chip brush, and because there's no paint on it, what I will do is very, very lightly just feather the paint. That's all you do, just lightly, lightly touch where you want your color blends to kind of come together and just lightly feather it just really you almost want to be careful how you're holding your brush so you're not holding it too hard and you're just like a feather just going to kind of dust over the paint and then every so often I will take my lint free cloth or shop towel remove any excess paint off the tips and just keep feathering you don't even have to have certain sections that have to have highlights or lowlights. You can just go in random. There doesn't have to be a certain pattern to it. At least that's how I will work sometimes with the chalk paints. And this is just my way of having some playtime and some fun time blending and seeing what other little things I can come up with. But using the clean brush, and you could use even an old chip brush as long as there's no other paints on it and it's all dry. Just take those paints and just lightly feather. It can be a lot of fun and very therapeutic just to play with your paints and see what you come up with. When I first learned to paint, even on canvas boards, and when I wanted to paint some furniture pieces, one thing I used to make a mistake with all the time is how hard I would hold the handle of the brush and how hard I would hold the brush to the piece I'm working on. And sometimes that will conflict with my results. So sometimes the, one of the best advices I can give people when they want to play with paint is try to really hold your brushes really lightly. So I decided to add a little bit of cocoa and I think I'm going to just go and put a full coat of, well, two full coats of the cocoa on the top. This particular tabletop is so pretty rough condition. And even with all kinds of sanding, it's still gonna have a lot of knocks and little nooks and crannies. So I'm just gonna have to work with its imperfections. But I did find this braided border and a knot by Royal Design Studio and I will have that in my description box below. It looks like a fun border and I thought this would create different symmetries to this particular little chest. And as you can see there's even a sample so you can line up the round portion of the border with the circle. So this way you can have it exact. I actually had to just figure out how I was going to work with this border size because the chest itself was a little bit small. So it was actually short for this particular stencil, but I just figured out how I could make it work. And I really want to kind of give this a little bit of an old effect. So I'm going to have to kind of shrink it in the best that I can. So, But if you had a piece or something that you're working on that's a little bit bigger, this will work out really beautifully. But for this, I'm just going to have to DIY it and kind of just work with the size and circumference that I have. So what I'm going to be doing after I've done this cocoa color and the stencil is I'm actually going to highlight it even more. So I think I'll add a little bit of white so you can actually place your stencils back exactly where you had them if you wanted to create some highlights or some lowlights whenever you're working with stencils. Because I had a little bit of more blue on one side and a little bit more green on the other side, I found that this helped raise the stencil out and it also kind of gave a two-toned effect. So I'm now creating a three-dimensional kind of look with all the paint colors. 
I just thought I'd take the circles and add them to each of the corners on the top of the table. Again, just using all three colors that I started with. Now I always hang on to all my original paintbrush colors and I put them in Ziploc bags. This way, if I want to go back and make any corrections or I just kind of want to create a little bit of a wear look with the original color. So I want to make the stencil look like it's been there for a while and I'm going to create a little bit of an overlay just by doing the stippling of the blue and the Chateau Grey green that I had and I'm just going to lightly, lightly stipple it across the stencils. And then to seal the project, I'm going to be using a white wax. And all I'm going to do is go around just creating enough wax that it's going to sit into the low point. So I'm just going to do this in small sections. And this is actually going to allow all the texture that was originally on the piece, as well as the texture I created with that chalk paint, and give it a really, really fun, smoky effect. Now, the other thing that you can do is put a clear wax coat on your piece first. That way you can control how white you want your white wax to create your effects. I just use straight white wax. Um, I didn't use any of the clear wax because I really want the white wax to get deep into those textures. I find sometimes if you stipple with your wax brush, that can help when you have a lot of knocks and dings in a piece of furniture. And again, we really want to kind of mask out those imperfections, but still create its authentic kind of old world kind of look to it. Now, because I would like to create kind of that smoky effect with the white wax, I'm probably going to leave it. But if you want to kind of down that a little bit, just take a lymphy cloth and just wipe it back a little bit, or you can even buff it a little bit for a little bit of a shine. Now, because I have a lot of projects on the go right now with a lot of room makeovers, a great way to play with textures, colors, and designs is using canvas boards. So I have this huge five by four feet, actually I have a few of them, canvas boards, and I will generally just prime them with some white gesso. And I have, I think three, but I'm only gonna be using two, of the Royal Design Studio stencils. And it's almost like a wallpaper or almost a faded wallpaper kind of look. I'm gonna be using several different chalk paint color tones. And again, I'm gonna be playing around with it and I'll kind of talk you through which colors I'll be using. But the white gesso is super easy to apply. I like to create textures on my canvas boards. So I will just use a regular synthetic brush to apply the gesso. And I recommend to leave it overnight to dry before you apply any other paints. Now I'll be using chalk paints, but you can use acrylic paints and other types of artistic paints that you may have. But it's just the art of playing with the styles, textures, and some colors. So use whatever you already have. But this just kind of shows you what the textures will look like when you apply the gesso. You don't have to have texture with your gesso. Gesso is just a primer for a canvas and some of the canvas boards already have a gesso application on it when you buy it. So not to worry too much about the gesso, I just wanted to show you what I used on my particular canvas board. And what I've started with is the cocoa color in the Annie Sloan chalk paint and now I'm actually going to be blending in some French linen. And all I'm doing is just creating a hue across the entire board. And it's again just highlights and low lights. So I'm going to be using the cocoa some French linen, and I think some country gray as well. And between those three, they're all very neutral, kind of on the gray side. And this is just gonna create a little bit of that random hue of light and dark on the board before I get into my next step. 
I'm really just going with the up and down motion, but sometimes what I did to make sure that it was getting into the canvas and the gesso is I would just kind of cross over. So I would do side to side and then back up and down again. But at the end, when it dries, you don't really see brush strokes like that. Um, what you do is see texture. It's kind of hard to explain, but when you're working on canvas, it's much different than working on a piece of furniture for regards of a brush strokes versus smooth finish. If you'd like a really smooth finish, just keep adding a little bit of water as you use your brush strokes. I'm kind of looking for a little bit more added detail and a little bit more textures as I did start with even the gesso, I wanted some texture. So I think it actually brings it out a little bit more predominantly on a canvas board. I love to play with layering textures. So this is kind of a faux texture, but it's an interesting texture is the ragging technique. So just using a moist shop towel, all I'm gonna do is create an old white wash. So I just apply the wash into sections, then I use the white rag just to go around and manipulate the wash, and the rag is now leaving kind of this print. And I'm just gonna go around and leave that white wash print with the rag all over the canvas board. Once everything is completely dry, then I can get into my next step. Again, just really important for each step that you do on your canvas board, very similar to furniture, just make sure each step is 100% dry before you get into the next one. What will happen if it's not, it's just gonna kind of lift off a little bit and then you'll have to go back and correct it. So it's just to kind of save that. Again, the chalk paints are a water-based paint and they do dry very, very quickly. So even for a canvas board this big, it still only took probably under an hour for my first base layer to be completely dry before I went ahead and started the wash. The working on canvas and working on furniture can be a little bit different. It's because your surfaces are different. So my advice for the canvas might be a little bit different than versus other advice that I've given on furniture projects in my previous tutorials. Because with furniture you're dealing with a lot of cleaners, varnishes, and other products that have been used on the surface, whereas when you're working on a canvas, even with a gesso surface, you don't have that interfering with what you're doing as your next painting step. Once the chalk paint wash is completely dry, I'm actually going to be using some of this blue Provence color. It's beautiful. I'll be using the Provence with the rag, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently versus the chalk paint washing and ragging technique. So I've created the wash. Now the washes and chalk paint are always 50% water, 50% paint. So I'm gonna use a moist towel, the original one that I had when I did the chalk paint wash, and I'm actually just gonna paint the wash onto the rag, then use the rag onto the board. Now because the chalk paint washes are 50% water, 50% paint, they're actually diluted. So when you apply them, whether it's straight from the rag or you apply it with a brush and then take it away with the rag, what you're doing is creating different hues because it's not a full concentration of the paint color. So I have this stencil, it's called the Faded Wallpaper, and it's actually from Royal Design Studios uh, as well. And it will be in my description box below. But it's a well-used well stencil, and it gets to a point where sometimes, no matter how many times you use it, it kind of almost has a permanent stain to it. But I'm going to be using the Scandinavian Pink and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna line up the stencil and one thing I really like about their stencils is they actually have line marks on the stencil on the white stencil itself so when you go to line up your stencils you can actually mark them exact so that way it just lines and pairs perfectly so what I've done to paint the stencil is I'm just stippling it so it's gonna actually have stronger color points and lighter points because it's not a full rolled on version of the paint. So it kind of gives a little bit of a faded effect. 
Once the stencil was completely dry, I actually used the rags that I used the ragging techniques with the paint washes. And I'm just gonna go around and dab everything on the board. And again, this is actually creating another texture layer on top of what I have. So I'm really delighted with how the whole effect has come together. And I would actually even use this as a staging wall and or a piece of art against a beautiful complementary color in a room. So for my canvas board project number two, again, it's the exact same size. It is five feet by four feet width. So five feet height, four feet width. I'm gonna start with just a base layer of French linen all over. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water, just kind of smooth it out a little bit. I did create a lot of extra texture with the gesso layer that I put on this canvas board. This time I want to create actually a lot of just random brush strokes. So it's going to be kind of cross hatching every which way, just kind of getting the paint onto the canvas itself. I will be a little bit thicker with the paint so that way I have a really good coverage as a base coat. And I'm going to save my brush. As you can see, there's a lot of paint still on there and I'm going to be using that in part of my last few steps. So I still have some white chalk paint wash left over, so I'm going to be reusing that, doing the same thing with the ragging technique. And I really wanted to try this stencil, but I'm going to try it with a much darker hue this time versus using a lighter pink. So I'm really kind of curious how this is all going to turn out, but first thing I will do is I will moist a new shop towel. I like using the shop towels because they're lint free on any of my projects, even my furniture projects. This way when I'm going around I don't have to worry about little residuals being left on my paint. So and especially when you're dealing with a very moist paint wash, it's really easy to get a lot of lint on there. And I do have those travel troubles, excuse me, with paper towels. Whereas the shop towels I never ever have any issues with lint. So I'm going to work in small sections, again 50% paint, 50% water, and I'm just going to do the entire canvas board. And I do the sides because there's actually a 2 inch um, border all the way around the canvas, because of, so there's a 2 inch width. Not all large canvas boards come with that, sometimes they're half an inch or an inch, but this one's a 2 inch. So both with this board and my previous project, I actually painted all the way around that two inch border all the way around the frame. So got some really amazing texture with the ragging technique, and I'm gonna let this dry 100% for about an hour. Then I'm going to be using the graphite chalk paint, and I'm gonna use a roller this time because the stencil layout's a little bit different. So I'm just gonna be able to run the roller and you want to use a little bit of paint at a time because if your paint is too thick on your roller and you're rolling it across, it actually will leak underneath your stencil. So a little bit of paint, you'll go further. So just try to be a little bit patient with it and just lightly roll it on section by section. As I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing a lot of room makeovers. So these are great ways to practice what I'd like to do for say half a wall or say even a complementary wall or creating those kind of textures and perhaps a stencil versus always just using wallpaper can sometimes give a beautiful, dramatic and really authentic look. These canvases make for great artwork against a complementary color as well. So using the rag that I used when I did the chalk paint wash with the white, I'm actually gonna go around and just kind of weather out the stencil that I did in the graphite. And again, I'm just kind of going for that really old and kind of worn look. I do recommend with the chalk paints to, and even any other type of canvas paint or canvas art that you're doing is to seal it with a protector. So there is a spray varnish that you can use and it's safe to even use on the chalk paints 
or you could even put a layer of the Annie Sloan lacquer. She has a matte and a gloss finish, whichever you would prefer. So I also decided to go back with the French linen brush that I had and just do a little bit of stippling across the stencils and again just giving it that aged effect. I wanted to show you a really quick, easy throw blanket using the Boucle Yarn by Loops and Threads. I'm going to be using a 12 millimeter crochet hook. This is super beginner friendly. So to start your blanket, all you're going to do is make a slip knot. So I just make a circle, pull the working yarn through, and now I have my first loop. Then I'm going to use the crochet hook, put it into each loop and pull through to create my first row of stitches. For the video, I'm just going to show you a demonstration. So I've started a row of 12 stitches. For the blanket, I used 40 stitches. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back into the previous loop and you're going to just make a single crochet. You'll have two loops on your crochet hook. Pull through once, pull through twice. That's it, single crochet. Then for this blanket, the entire pattern is now you're going to do a double crochet. So you'll go into the next stitch prior. Now you're going to create three loops on your crochet hook. You'll remove two, then you're going to remove two again. So the entire pattern for this blanket is single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, all through your rows, each and every row. Again, for a single crochet, you'll have two loops on your crochet hook, pull through once, pull through twice. For a double crochet, you're going to yarn over for a double crochet. Then you'll have three loops, remove two, remove two again, then you'll have one. You, now you'll do a single crochet. So you'll have two loops, pull through once, that's a single crochet. It's pretty easy, it's just a repetition. That's what makes it fun and easy and even beginner friendly easy. But it creates a really beautiful textured pattern and it stitches up really quickly. A couple of quick tips with crochet. The last stitch is always going to be off to the side a little bit, so you definitely want to make sure you catch that because if you don't, your blanket's going to be a little bit crooked on its side and at the end of each row you're always going to chain two more stitches when you go over to your well when i flip it over i'm going to go into my next stitch just proceed on from whatever the pattern was so if your last one was a double crochet continue on with a single crochet into the next row vice versa if it was a single crochet that you finished off with make sure you chain two stitches reverse your work, then do a double crochet. I always recommend to do a small little swatch of maybe 10 stitches and a few rows, just so that way you can get used to the pattern. But as you can see, as you're building up on a crochet, you're actually gonna be going into the chains and you'll see that there's two, two stitches at the top. You're actually gonna be going through both of them. Because you're kind of doubling up as you are single crocheting and double crocheting, that's why the stitches will have this double rib at the top and that's what you're going to be stitching into. But now you can start to see the pattern starting to form and it's almost got this bubbled effect across your chains. Again, for this blanket, I started with 40 stitches and I used five balls of the boucle in the cream color and that started with the base of my blanket. Again, a super easy pattern. Just going in and gonna do a single crochet. Now I'm gonna do a double crochet, then back to a single crochet. So it's just a repeat pattern over and over for every single row. This is super soft and super thick yarn, so this will stitch up very quickly. 
If you want a small size, I recommend 30 stitches to start your blanket. If you want a medium size, 40. And if you want a really big one, start with 50 or 60 stitches to start the blanket. So I just want to show you again at the end of each row to keep it nice and straight. Your stitch is actually kind of off to the side there. So you'll want to get in onto the side of the end of the row. And don't forget to chain two before you flip your work over. The chain of the two is actually going to now transfer to a stitch automatically once you've turned your work over. So it's just part of the crocheting and that is going to keep the other side of the blanket nice and straight. So again, just going to do a single crochet. Now I'm going to do a double crochet. So it's just repeat after repeat, single crochet, double crochet. Because it stitches up so quickly, I was able to complete this in just three nights. So it's extremely therapeutic. It makes beautiful gifts. Or if you just want to keep it for yourself, it is super warm and super soft. To add on a new ball of yarn as you're stitching through your blanket, super easy. You're just going to take the end and the beginning, tie it into the knot, make sure you pull from all four. Once you've done that, then you can just cut off the little tails. This yarn is machine washable. I just recommend you use a delicate cycle and lay flat to dry. I am absolutely in love with this boucle yarn. It has such a beautiful organic texture to it and it's so soft and it just makes beautiful decor and makes any room feel inviting. So I'm going to use this taupe color. I started with the cream. I used five balls of that for the blanket. Now I'm going to use three of this darker taupe color to create a border. So I'm going to show you how I start with that. So I'm going to go and finish my last row of the actual blanket and I'll show you how to cast off. So to create the border, all I'm going to do is start with the slip knot. Once I've started with the slip knot, I'm just going to put my crochet hook into the slip knot. Then I'm going to add it directly to the border. All you're going to do is just start with the exact same pattern all over again. So one single crochet to double crochet. So I'm going to do the exact same pattern all the way around. So you're just going to go around to all of the whole stitches all the way around the blanket side by side doing the exact same pattern. One single crochet, one double crochet. When you start it, if you have with your slip knot, you'll have a little tail. You can just go ahead and you can even create two knots onto it and cut it off. This is also a great way to add more color dimension to the blanket by using the contrast colors. So you can make that border as wide as you want. I only went around, I think three or four times, I can't remember, but again, it's giving that nice bubbled effect with a single and double crochet stitch. To casting off, you're always creating a stitch when you crochet. So only to cast off the blanket, when you're ready and your last stitch, you're just gonna cut off your working yarn and you're just going to pull it through that last loop, pull it really tight, and then I usually just weave in well, the tail, we or you can cut it off. Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy but things are fine Thank you so much for watching this week's video and please if you have any questions and or comments leave me a comment in the comment box below. All the supplies and the materials will also be found in the description box below. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That's going to tell you when I upload my next video. Until then, take care. I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. I'm really excited. I feel like we should tell them, Raf. Raphael, what do you think? Should we tell them? We should probably wait. It's a surprise. Welcome. Raffi.
Katie, are you good? Are you good? Katie, there's a big house. You guys can go somewhere for five minutes, please. Stop. Thank you. Can you wait? Can you wait? Five easy DIY 